like that and see families, these are incredible families where they lost their daughters in this case. Uh, you had some other people in the room, they lost sons. Mm -hmm. uh, this should never happen. That was the president today in Long Island talking to Brian Kilmeade. He spoke about the menace of that machete-wielding Salvadoran street gang. The interview airs on Fox and Friends tomorrow morning early. Meanwhile, Nancy Pelosi and other animal rights activists have rallied to the defense of MS-13, but sadly, other people have learned the hard truth about it. Rob Mickens' daughter was murdered by MS-13. He met with the president today. He joins us tonight. Rob, thank you for coming on tonight. Oh, thank you for having me, Tucker. What, what's your reaction to this, to the controversy around the president's description of MS-13 as animals? He was actually being very polite about it. You know, he can't really say what's on his mind because people like to take things out of contact. But what they did is, is a savage act, and he nailed it right on the head by calling them animals. Why do you think people would defend them? Because there's always going to be somebody who's going to take something that the president says and take it out of context. Then they're going to be on the opposite side of what the president is trying to do. Which he's just basically trying to help us, not my family, but help us, the United States, the citizens of the United States, with this problem with the MS-13, how it's ruining families. It sure is. So you, we're probably roughly the same age. I mean, the MS-13 didn't exist when you were a kid. No, they didn't. I think how? they've been around for about maybe 20 years in the United States. Yeah. What, what, tell us what happened to your daughter. Well, my daughter, Nisa Mickens, was attacked the eve of her uh, 16th birthday. She was walking back with her best friend, Kayla, back to Kayla's house, and these vicious animals approached them and decided to kill both of them over a dispute that happened in a high school between Kayla and one of the members of MS-13. It had nothing to do with your daughter? No, my daughter was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. She really That's was. I'm sorry about that. Thank you. What did, what did the president say to you today? He said, you know, we're working hard. We're going to continue fighting to eradicate this gang. And America is giving us nothing but support about what happened to us and to the other families that also suffered the same way through the crimes of the MS-13. He's sticking behind us 100 percent, and so am I. God, I'm sorry. It's, it's really a shocking and sad story. Rob, thank you for coming on and telling us that. You're welcome. Mexico's presidential candidates disagree on many things, but they are all united on one point. They want to ship as many people as they can to this country illegally. During a recent debate in Tijuana, the border city across from San Diego, all four Mexican presidential candidates said if elected, they would assist Central American migrants traveling to the U.S. illegally through Mexico. Enrique Acevedo is a news anchor for Univision, a frequent guest on the show, and he joins us again tonight. Enrique, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Great to be here, Tucker. So this is, among other things, and the other things would include a criminal conspiracy to subvert American law, an act of hostility aimed directly at our national interest by all four of the potential future presidents of Mexico. Why should we not consider Mexico an enemy in light of this? Well, candidates say a lot of things when they're campaigning. President Trump, for example, said he was going to build a wall in the border and Mexico was going to pay for it. 17 months into his presidency, we know that's never going to happen. I thought the candidates in Mexico showed their willingness to cooperate with the U.S. on issues like immigration and border security. We're already well, doing that. Minister, Both countries can, are because you make, doing a, that. you make an interesting point, I'm sorry, and I'll let you finish in just a second, but let me just suggest the difference between the two pledges. The president pledged to build a wall on American soil with American tax dollars. He did not propose forcing Mexico to pay at gunpoint, he said, I will convince him to pay. I don't think he will. But he did not suggest breaking Mexican law. He did not suggest subverting Mexican national security. He did not, in effect, declare war on Mexico. All four Mexican presidential candidates just did that. So why should we not consider Mexico a hostile foreign power? 
like like I was saying, I, I thought the candidates showed their willingness to cooperate with the U.S. on issues like immigration and border security. Both countries are already doing that. The problem is when you have cabinet members traveling to Mexico, like Secretary Nielsen or Secretary Mattis, to uh, gloat about the cooperation, to sign agreements left and right, and then two hours later, President Trump tweets that Mexico is not doing anything for us. No, but I'm, I'm sorry. A lot of frustration, I, and then I don't you know, know the, if you the heard my point. Tremendous right. pressure. I, I understand. It's a, it's a rocky relationship, and, and both sides are at fault for that, and I understand. This is something very different from what we've seen before. All four men running for the presidency of Mexico are pledging to intentionally break American federal immigration law and help flood our country with people we don't want here to our detriment. That, that's never happened before. No one's ever said that out loud before. All four of them just said that. Why shouldn't we pause and reassess our relationship with Mexico on the basis of that? Well, it should make us pause about how President Trump is unfairly criticizing Mexico, and this is why. The oh. candidates were referring to the <laughs> fact that right now, since, president, since uh, Trump became president, Mexico has arrested and deported over 200,000 immigrants. 200,000 immigrants. Still, President Trump insists that Mexico is not doing anything to help the U.S. No, on issues mean, like I'm sorry, for the fifth border time. security. They so just the yesterday say, if you're said be they were going to criticize. We might as well not do anything and let those 200,000 immigrants just go through Mexico. Really? So what would happen if the United States, which it could do in one day with an order from the president to the Department of Treasury, stopped all remittances from Mexican citizens working here and floating the damaged, corrupt Mexican economy with American dollars? What would happen to Mexico? Oh, it would collapse, actually. So the truth is, without illegal immigration in the United States, Mexican happen. leaders, who are mostly rich, get to ignore the social problems of Mexico and dis and transfer them to the backs of American taxpayers. So actually, we're doing Mexico a massive favor here. Well, and to give us the finger like this, why should we put up with that? Like you said, they're not referring to Mexican immigrants. They're referring to Central American immigrants coming through Mexico. And Mexico, through cooperation and agreements like the ones uh, that Secretary Nielsen and Secretary Mattis glow about, and the ones that President Trump undermines, through that cooperation, Mexico is stopping hundreds of thousands of those immigrants. So your Central position America. is— So what Mexico is saying, why should we keep cooperating with the U.S. if we're going to be unfairly criticized? Oh, and I think that's so, a valid so how position. would you feel—how would Mexico—how would you feel as a journalist if, in this next round of presidential elections in the United States, all the candidates said, you know what, we're going to take our poor people and we're going to send them to Mexico. We're going to help them get into Mexico and go on welfare there. Would you well, see that as a provocative threat? That's a, or would that's you an blame Mexico for that as you right, are blaming the United States? That's an excellent question, Tucker. Yes, it is. It's a, thank from you. minute one in the campaign, we heard President Trump refer to Mexican immigrants as rapists and criminals. We heard President Trump talk about a wall. No. We heard repeated criticism, on oh, so, criticism about Mexico and criticism about Mexico while we're neighbors and strategic partners and allies, strategic allies. Partners? We are heard that through all, throughout the we campaign. We float the kleptocracy of Mexico through our benevolence, and you're testing it. So, like, this is not a peer relationship at all. Mexico is a corrupt country run by a tiny oligarchy of blonde people for their own benefit, and Mexico we make that possible. Mexico has corrupt politicians, like the U.S. does, too. Mexico has corrupt politicians, but you know, it's not a corrupt country. It's a great country, and I think— Then why are people fleeing are it by the millions? also running on, Mexi on making Mexico great again, just like Trump promised Americans. You don't give an inch, I have to say. I'll let I'll our try. viewers decide. Thank you, I'll Enrique. Try. Good to see you. Thank you, Tucker. NFL is finally taking some action to halt or at least hide the national anthem protest. Took them two years. We'll tell you what they've decided to do next.